Screen time and kids. Many parents now forced into online learning. A local doctor shares what you need to know to help your kids get the most from their screen time. As Good Day Charlotte on Fox 46 at 7 o'clock starts now. Good morning. You're watching Fox 46. Good Day Charlotte. New this morning with kids spending more time inside, especially with the upcoming school year and e-learning, they could be spending even more time in front of the screen, which is what they've been doing all summer, let's face it. Joining us to discuss the impact, our good friend, Dr. Anna Maria Temple. Dr. Temple, good Wednesday as always. Good Wednesday. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. All right. So I, now that the decisions have been made statewide, I think most parents, whoever the caretakers are for, for kids and students, we realize the, the, the duty for educating kids this fall is going to rest in our hands, which, which worries us to some degree, right? But I think one of the things that, that my wife and I were talking about is our kids, let's be honest, they've been spending a lot of screen time. And now we're about to double the screen time even more. What are some things that we can do to make sure that the amplified screen time is going to be healthy for them? I am so concerned. You know, my middle schooler, they just send out the message that he's going to be on Zoom from 9.15 in the morning to 4.15 in the oh. afternoon. That is incredible to me. So, you know, I came up with like five things that we can do. Number one, you know, we can't fight against it. But number one, what we can do, we can fight against the blue light. So we want to block the brain drain. So I have two options here. These are blue light blockers, and these block 50% of blue light, and these bad boys, 99% of the blue light. You could also, on a cheaper version, you can turn the display monitor on your computer down, uh, turn it to night shift. You can turn your iPads, I read on my iPad, my tablet on yeah. night shift mode. Now you just see my ring light. <laughs> and then actually on your phone, you have a setting that you just press this and yeah. you can turn your phone into night shift. No, so and it, explain quickly, why, why is the blue light bad for our brain? What, what, what is that doing to us? It is very irritating, causes anger, irritability, and it prevents you from having a good night's sleep because it decreases your melatonin production. Oh, boom. Okay. Now, listen, I've uh -huh. heard a lot of interior designers say when you're making a, a room where you're going to be studying or a place where you want to be uh, um, inspired, bright colors and lights, all that stuff helps with your mood. A lot of people like to close themselves in, close the blinds, the, the curtains. Talk about escaping uh, into sunshine. What does that mean? So I say that, you know, we want to be outside. And, you know, my biggest issue with schools is they don't let the kids outside. And now we have Zoom school that's going to be trapped inside dark rooms. After every class, make sure you ask the teacher that your child can go outside for 10 minutes to just go out in the sun, or even if it's raining or if it's snowing, it doesn't matter. Go outside and see natural light, which is the most amazing thing for our brain, and our eyeballs. It decreases your risk of needing glasses. Uh, number three, uh, which I, I completely agree with, the end of school does not mean Minecraft. I mean, I have a feeling when the kids get through with their six, eight hours of being on Zoom, the first thing they're going to want to do is get right back on, right back on it, right? Right. right. We have to have really strict guidelines. It is super hard. It is so hard in my household. I literally walk around all day. Hand me your phone. Turn off the Minecraft. Give me the cords to your <laughs> Xbox. But we have to be really vigilant because after eight hours on Zoom school, you can't have six hours on video games. Do you think that this is going to, uh, this goes to your fourth point. Uh, do you think this could possibly lead to teen depression? And how do we look out for it? I'm so I'm so concerned because the cho the teens, you know, speaking of the bright rooms, they're not. They're in dark rooms and closed off and hunched over their screens, and the, they're socially isolated. Social isolation is the number one cause for depression, anxiety, and the teen suicide rates are rising at an astronomical rate. And I'm worried that this is going to add to it. We got to get our teens, extract them with the jaws of life out of their rooms, make them do family time, get them out of their rooms. I like that. And you're going to have to be more intentional about the friend time because it's not going to happen naturally at school. So out of school, be socially distant, you know, obviously still do, go through all the safety precautions, but you're going to have to let those kids still be able to, you know, have that friendship time. All right. Number five might be my favorite because we both sit a lot during the day. I know I do. Shake your booty. You got to shake your booty. Sitting is as toxic as cigarette smoking on our health. And what we realized when we were fully quarantined and I had to do all my Zoom visits from home, that I was taking like three steps a day. And what we want to do is take 10,000 steps a day. So in between classrooms, have your kids do sit-ups or push-ups, jump rope, go torture the dog. I don't care. Go torture the sibling. <laughs> Just go do something that is not sitting down.
I love it. Dr. Temple, I'm going to grab some of those glasses. Going to get out of the doom and gloom, get out and do some sunshine. Matter of fact, I got two and a half minutes. You put the glasses on. I'm going to do the booty shake, and we're going to get through the end of quarantine as we transition into back to school. Dr. Temple, always a pleasure. So great to be here. Have a wonderful day. All right, we're going to get up and walk. We'll see you. We'll be back.